Ooh, been all over Rogue, Rogue Port Lo, looking for Luigi. So finally I found him. It's a pretty long story. Which part of the story you want to hear, bro? Okay, first off, the Waffle Kingdom letter. Well, I'm going to read the text out loud. Well, like I said, it's really... It's a really long story, but here goes. My great brother, that's you, bro, got a letter from Princess Peach and took off. Left behind as usual, I was cooking a snack at home when another letter arrived. We don't get so much mail, so I was thinking, huh? This is what the letter said. Sirs, my name is Crate. I am a cabinet minister in the far off Waffle Kingdom. Our land has been attacked by the Chestnut King, who took our uh, Princess of Claire. I ask, nay, beg of you for your assistance. The Waffle Kingdom needs your skills. I humbly request your prompt response, sir. Sincerely, Crate. Well, I don't remember it exactly, but I think it went something like that. With Mario, that's you, bro, gone, it felt to me to answer this plea. Hesitating only a teensy bit, I headed to the Waffle Kingdom to investigate. Oh no, first I wrote a note to myself about what I was cooking, then I left. Once I reached the Waffle Kingdom, I met Minister Creek who filled me in. The Chestnut King had kidnapped Princess Eclair and vanished. Apparently, though, some oracle in the said a marvelous compass could locate her. This marvelous compass had been broken into seven parts by the, an ancient curse, and those parts had been scattered across the land. Can you believe it, bro? Each part of the marvelous compass was said to point to the depths, and since one of the parts was embedded in a tiara worn by the princess, I surmise that once I collected all the parts, I'd find her. Smart, huh? The minister gave me the compass uh, base spoken of in Waffler fables. When it activated, the entire thing lit up, indicating the deep south. It was pointing me toward the uh, Rumble Bump volcano on the Pudding Continent. So yeah, here I am. I'm sailing out to uh, out of Rollport for Rumble Bump volcano. It's probably going to be pretty dangerous, but I got to rescue that princess. Yeah, it sounds just like Mario's story. I mean, why hasn't the Nintendo bit caught on to the request that they should make another Luigi gig game, but in a sense, same style as the Paper Mario series. Okay, next up is Rumble Bunk Volcano. Well, like I said, it's a really long story, but here it goes. As soon as my ship docked on the pudding continent, I set out for, uh, for the volcano. To reach my destination, I spent several days uh, fording through dense ju jungle. Scary beasts were all over. More than once I uh, thought I was done for, bro. I may have uh, screamed a bit to scare, scare them off, you know. But was fit, as fate would have it, a blooper named Blue. Bluey heard me sh shrieking and found me in this one town. Bluey was on a journey of his own and he joined me after hearing my tale. Now Bluey's a madman back in his hometown they called him White Torpedo. Yeah, he's a tough guy anyway, he helped me fight the Rumble Bump Volcano. This place was all about bubbling lava pools and heat that may make the sun sweat. And the place was lousy with evil traps designed to protect the compass piece. The scariest one of all was uh, this gigantic 100 foot tall statue that stomped all around. Now that the weakness of this giant statue bro was a red gem on its forehead. Now I could jump high, but not high enough to reach this day, being by a long shot. So I came up with this plan for Bluey to hit that weak spot. All you, man, I said. I waited for a pause in the statue's movements and hooked Bluey up there. And Bullseye, the white torpedo, saved the day. That jewel got whacked. And it was a critical hit, and that stone statue toppled and crumbled into pieces. Once that was done, it was an easy stroll to the room where the treasure was. 
Unfortunately, Princess Eclair was nowhere to be found. But I got another piece of the marvelous compass and put it in the base. Now the compass pointed west to Plump Valley Village on the Strudel continent. So I set sail once again and came back here to Rockport to recharge. That's what happened to me lately, but I'll be heading back out soon. Plump Valley Village. Well, like I said, it's a... Oh, what we made a landfall on the Strudel continent, we made for Plump Valley Village. Once we got there though, we immediately noticed that something was wrong. We learned from the mayor that the town was ruled by a giant snake named Hizza. He said his own daughter was going to be offered up as a sacrifice to this beast too. So of course being heroic, I offered myself up to go in her steed. Brave, huh? Now, the custom was for a sacrifice to be dressed as brides, so I got all dolled up. I was one, one hot sacrifice, bro. I looked so good I pulled our clothes and got in his lair. It was kind of rough fighting in the in that gown, but I managed to find a really shapes, bro. I finally found his and the snake had a second head on its tail. Talk about scary. I fainted really quick, but when I came to, I managed to distract both heads. I reared up the fangs bear to attack, and at the moment, I deathly lunged left. Escaping mouths smashed into one another, and he vanished in, in a cloud of smoke. A shining plate fell down on the spot where Hisa's body had been coiled. Yes, another compass piece. I set. I set it and it pointed these to Circuit Break Island. Just as I was about to leave town, the mayor asked me to stay and marry his daughter. I thought about it. She was sort of cute, but we ended up sneaking off the next morning. I mean, I still have to save Princess Eclair from the Chestnut King, and when the Marvelous Compass activated this time, I heard somebody's voice. It was so beautiful, bro. I'm certain it was Princess Eclair's voice. My heart began, began to race. That's when I realized it. Princess Eclair, I think I... Oh, I kind of zoned out there. So yeah, we set sail again after ditching town. And somehow we managed to get back here to Rogue Park, and here I am. Just as our bull arrived at Circuit Break Island, we heard this incredible racket. We soon found out that they hold cart races almost every day on the island. Word takes a place in the uh, race get, gets to rule the island as king for that day. Just as we got to the uh, race track, they were holding the award ceremony. I couldn't believe my eyes. Right there on the trophy they give to the winner. It was another piece of the marvelous compass. I almost passed the dead away. I decided right there, then and there that the only thing to do was enter the race. I mean I've driven in kart races before so I thought I'd be okay. Boy was I wrong. The carts were supercharged machines that could send you airborne with their exhaust. These vehicles were armed with missiles and bazookas. It was anything goes, bro. Of course, I wanted to get right out of their problem. These drivers were great. But I worked out my courage and signed up anyway. My race day finally came. I got one of the best parts, the big green 01. I took my position at the start line. The light went through a green. I stomped on the accelerator and something bad happened. I was in reverse, the big green one went rocking me backwards with me yelling. I crashed into the wall behind me hard enough to cut to cut me off mid-screen. In one fell swoop, I dropped into last place and wrecked my racing machine. 
But it wasn't all bad news, all the other parts crashed because of my maneuver. Once I got in gear and took off, I was the only car left. I won by a country mile, bro. I took the piece off my by dropping and added it to the marvelous compass. The compass came to La Life and pointed me toward the Jazz of Brass town in the east. Then I heard that voice. Princess Eclair's voice echoed in my ears again. Oh, my princess, random words with foreign poetry spoken by her voice. I will most definitely save you. Just wait for me, Princess Eclair. Oh, sorry about that, bro. So, after that, I got back on my boat and came back here to roll for it, and that's what's been up with me. As soon as we hit Jazz, Jazz a fast sound. We were overcome by the glitz in gl Glamour. It's a very lively uh, place, bro. Tons of daisies uh, live there, and they're always smiling. While looking for for the piece of color compass, I met a hip daisy named Hazy. Hazy was a producer, and he was looking for actors to go on stage with him. I told him we couldn't since we, we were looking for the compass part, you know? But Hazy said we could win, win the compass part in the upcoming drama slam. He said the so-called draw, Drama Llama Plaque might, in fact, back be one of the parts. Well, we just had to give it a try, so we rehearsed with the cast and hit the stage. Our musical was called The Mystery of the Fiery Hat of Social Awareness. The script was great, but I really, but I got really hosed, bro. My role, my part, was grass. I played grass by the side of the road. Grass, bro, grass. I just sprawled out on the ground and had to be silent. Everyone but me had lines. I don't care if I was wearing green. Who cast someone based on that? It was awful. In the end, our musical was the talk of the town, and we won the drama slam. I got the compass part I was after, but even that didn't make me very happy. The huge after party just bummed me out even more, so I snuck out the back door. But wow, outside were tons of fans, my fans, fans of grass, they swarmed me. I just couldn't believe it, imagine cheering for grass, I was ecstatic bro. After that I added a piece of the marvelous compass which pointed north. It pointed to the rapturous ruins in Grimble Forest. Then the voice it again. Oh my cherished princess of Claire, how you soothe me. I will be grass for you. I will find you. I will reach you. I will stand by your side and be your Luigi. Wow, sorry about that, bro. So yeah, anyway, then I got back on my boat. And here I am, another leg of my adventure completed. After journeying deep into the Grimble Forest, I found the domed rapturous ruins. Inside, everything was pure white. You couldn't tell where the floor became walls. Proceeding dead ahead, I found myself in a chamber where a young boy sat. As I approached the floor, boy, someone that named Screamy appeared out of nowhere. Screamy said the boy's name was Cranberry. And that he wait wait for a child of faith. That didn't make any sense to me, so I said, search quietly for the compass piece. But then it happened, bro. I got a tiny tickle on my nose, and I let out a huge sneeze. Well, Cranberry must have heard it, cause he opened his eyes right up. He looked at me and smiled, and all of a sudden I couldn't understand his language. Can you believe I learned that the boy was the last of his ancient race, the Lux. He had been there guarding the marvelous compass piece for the last thousand years. He told me that the compass is an item with the power to see into the future. The ancient Lux Empire used the power of the compass to rule much of the world. Because of their great 
They were cursed by the compass in the their empire to land. To prevent a repeat of the of their fate, Cranberry broke the compass into seven parts. He had six and kept one, putting himself to sleep until a worthy hero woke him. I was that hero, bro. He gave it to me and then he and the ruins vanished. When I added the, that piece to the compass, it pointed to the far north where dreaded hate song tower stands. This time I heard Princess and Claire's uh, voice more clearly than ever before. I will rescue the princess. I will be super and then I'll, I'll, well, I'll figure the rest out later. Anyway, I headed back to hear the world for after that. I'm making my final preparations for my final battle now. I'm a little nervous, bro, but that's what I've been up to anyway. And this part is crazy, but here it goes. Heat Song Stout Tower stands atop a jagged, unclimbable cliff beyond the northernmost sea. The winds will whistle down the cliff, howling like banshees, singing songs of hate. People say it's pretty much the scariest place in the world, and I had to go there. Walking out the bone-chilling house, I somehow managed to reach the tower's dope door. I was terrified, but thoughts of Princess and Claire warmed my heart and gave me power. All my companions felt the same way. They were with me to the bitter end. The door to the tower swung slowly open to reveal an, an unconceivable darkness. I tried to call out Princess and Claire's name, but I couldn't even breathe because as I strained my eyes in the dark darkness, I saw the most terrifying beast of all. The Chestnut King himself appeared before me. He was monstrous and drooling. Pulls of toxic goo dripped from his mouth, melting the very ground at our feet. I couldn't stop shaking, but I gritted my teeth and faced the evil beast dead on. I dodged the king's fangs, jumped in onto his chest and gave him a hammer whack. My swing split the air and crashed the dead center onto the chestnut king's skull. Hope powered me up, bro. I was going toe to toe with the king and I was loving it. This is it, I thought. I could win this. I'll risk it all on my next blow. I gripped my hammer tight and waited for my moment. The tension stung me. Schwack! The ocean winds raged against the tower windows. With that sound as my call to battle, I advanced with no mercy in my heart. And then, and then... I beat him. I defeated the Chestnut King. And even worse, Beast came next, a nightmare thing, but I beat it too. I rescued Princess Eclair, it was all over. And then I came back, back to Rollcourt and had a lot light lunch, that's about it. Huh, you think there's more to the story than that? Not at all, that's it. That's the whole story of the quest for Princess Eclair, didn't end. But my adventures won't end here, bro, they'll never end. Alright, there's one more on the list. The Super Luigi book. Actually, I you know what? This guy actually novelized my quest. He's been interviewing me. He was actually interviewing me at, here at the end during the breaks of my adventure. I didn't think anyone would be interested in reading a book about Luigi, but Super Luigi came out recently. And check this out, bro. Here in Roadport. It set a new re record for consecutive weeks at number one on the bestseller list. Oh, ho, 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 ho. hooray for Luigi, bro. I started reading it the other day, but it's an in in 
encyclopedic account of in multiple volumes. Excruciating detail, bro. It's like a history book. It seemed like one anyway. They've gone in the shop here in Roquefort. How about you snag a coffee, bro? Okay, the last tales on the list is buy his fucking books. If you want to hear what I've been up to, just come find me, okay? I'll be around. Anyway, that's about it for this episode. Episode, I mean, the extra video. So, anyway, thanks for what, watching, and I'll do another one with that relates to the that relates to the Super Luigi novels. Until next time, see ya.